Welcome to our discussion of Voltron Legendary Defender, uh, Season 1, Episodes 6 and 7, uh, Taking Flight and Return to the Balmera. Um, as always, our discussions are going to be filled with spoilers. Uh, we're going to mix this up a little bit, give you our grades, uh, at least collectively, for the episodes up front, and then we'll talk about them in more detail. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to assign these two uh, episodes a, a very solid A. I, I like both episodes a lot. I thought they did a great um, job of blending um, action from um, the paladins themselves individually mm -hmm. uh, and in their little speeders, you know, um, and as well as in the lions, we, we finally got to see Voltron in action again, which it, it had been a while. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I thought these were uh, some some fun episodes. Plus, we had some good voice actors. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the way that the story is progressing. And I think that we got to see a little bit more of the personality yeah. of both the, the individual paladins as well as their lions. Right. Um, I, you know, I really got the sense that, like, Hunk is kind of like a, you know, because he's a bigger guy, even he and his lion both are really physical. Yeah. They don't they don't go for the tricks and the lasers, which is right. kind of interesting. Right. Um, and I really enjoyed, uh, I, I, I mean, it's not really a spoiler because we're going to talk about it anyway, right. um, the, the addition of guest voice actors, yes. um, Norman Reedus as Rolo, um, a... Uh, a kind of bounty hunter, and mm -hmm. we'll talk a little bit about more what yeah. he does, and his fellow bounty hunter, I don't remember her name. Naima, I think. Naima, yeah. yeah. Played by Lacey Chabert from Mean Girls and Party Five. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked um, their work in uh, Taking Flight. Norman Reedus uh, was here, so that was a nice reunion, a nice Walking Dead reunion yeah. with Stephen Yeun, who, who plays... Um, Keith. Yeah. Um, my understanding is that those guys are friends in, in real life. So I thought that that was fun. I hadn't realized that Norman Reedus was going to be in, in that episode. His voice was definitely recognizable. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. So, so what happens in these episodes, um, we're getting ready to leave, uh, yeah. and, and go back to the Balmera and free, uh, the Balmerans, uh, right. in the first episode taking flight. Um, and as they, as they begin to leave, um, they hit, they get a distress signal. Um, and so because their, their job as paladins is to help people in distress, right. they go to the distress sing signal. Yeah. Um, it ends up being, um, these two, these two bounty hunters, uh, we don't know that they're bounty hunters at first. We right. think they're the resistance. That's what they say. Take them at their word. Hunk doesn't believe them. Right. Hunk is um, naturally distrusting of them, mostly because he wants to go save his girlfriend, but also because they just had a, a real serious incident where they trusted people right. and they they uh, their ship got taken over. Yeah. So um, rightfully, he does not trust them. He's not willing to let them in the castle. He brings them... Um, the supplies that they need to get their ship back going. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was fun because uh, Hunk didn't uh, trust them. Lance, of course, because of the kind of guy he is, was easily seduced by, by Naima. Uh, the blue line was, was stolen um, by these bounty hunters, and then the rest of the paladins have to rescue it. Uh, some fun action sequences in um, that asteroid belt, mm -hmm. um, Keith was the the MVP there. I mean, he basically took these guys out um, almost on his own. And there were some really interesting moments in both of these episodes that I thought were kind of reminiscent of um, various scenes in Star Wars. You yeah. know, like going through the asteroid belt and like, you know, sure. navigating between stuff. The bounty hunter thing. I mean, we right. saw that with... Um, uh, with various bounty hunters, various bounty yeah, hunters yeah. in the Star Wars, but all, right. uh, but also with um, with uh, Harrison Ford's character, yeah, Han Solo. Han Solo. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially in the last movie, you know, he right. he and Chewie are sure. Yeah, so I thought that was really that was kind of fun and, yeah. and possibly kind of a intertextual kind of exchange yeah. there. Um, one of my favorite funny scenes um, from the season so far took place in this episode. And that was as they're about to depart, Pidge uh, kind of says, okay, guys, I have a confession <laughs> to make. Um, I'm actually a girl. And, I mean, it was hilarious because they all had, like... Probably not very surprising, uh, you know, reactions to that. I mean, a couple of the guys, like Hunk, was like, yeah, I figured that. 
Um, and Princess Alora said, yeah, I've known for a while. Um, Corin, uh, his reaction was maybe the best, which yeah. was, wait, we were supposed to think that you were a girl? <laughs> Um, and then, of course, um, uh, Lance. Lance was in just stunned disbelief. So that that was some nice, um, nice. Yeah. Nice once group. again, Lance is the like least um, observant of, yes. of the group, and least yes. least kind of culturally, socially aware right. of the group. Right. Um, so we end that episode. They, they do. They fight um, yeah. the bounty. We'll track down the bounty hunters. Uh, get the the lion back, and you know, snatch up their ship pretty badly, right. and and leave them uh, on on a uh, planet, saying like, now you can ask somebody else for your just with right. your distress signal, um, and leave it at that. Yeah, and that that leads directly into uh, Return to the Balmera, where all right. So now the the, the castle is, is nearing this kind of living world. They want to liberate it as the, the kind of opening salvo in this kind of galaxy-wide crusade mm-hmm. against the, the Galra um, Empire. Um, and um, they did a good job of, you know, making some plans. Um, so it wasn't... Uh, I, thought, I thought that kind of planning mm-hmm. was, was a nice addition to all this. Um, what they didn't know, however, is that the bounty hunters in selling their bounty yeah. had notified um the uh Z- Zarkon Zarkon's and, and people his, not his Zarkon minions. himself some yeah. of his minions who yeah. who were operating independent of Zarkon Zarkon sure. had told them to like stay put and he was going to do this through the druids right. um but had notified them that he had um access to the blue lion and yeah. that Voltron was on their way so one element of, of this that I actually really liked was throughout the entire episode, of course, the viewer knows that this whole thing is an ambush or a trap. Well, in a lot of um, maybe animated shows or even movies intended for maybe a broader audience, um, the audience is the only one who's clued into the fact that the protagonists are walking into a trap. Not so here. I mean, mm-hmm. Shiro is actually a smart guy. And throughout the entire episode, he and the rest of the paladins are are saying, look, like, we know this is a trap or an ambush, (laughs) but we have to do this. They're forcing our hands. We still need to rescue Shay and her people. And so, you know, we have to do certain things. Um, But they're but they're aware of that. They're trying to mitigate that. So I thought that was um, that was a nice nod um, where we don't have to accept that like our heroes are idiots. Well, and, and that they really are heroes. I mean, they're not just yeah. going in their guns blazing. They realize the Balmera is a living creature. They don't want to hurt it right. as the, the, um, the enemy forces are, are shooting at them and, and missing and then thereby shooting the Balmera. They right. realize like we need to, we need to make this stop. We need to take care of this. So yeah. they, they really are doing everything that they can to, save both the people who have been, the, the creatures that have been Balmerans who have been imprisoned by um, by these forces, and also to try and save this Balmera planet. Yeah, yeah and so so during this, this attack on Balmera, we actually see, as we were talking at the start of the, the mm-hmm. video, um, we see some interesting development with the lions. And yeah. then so we've got, um, Keith realizes that his lion has some fire... Um, powers, pretty he cool stuff. Melt things, basically. Melt, melt basically holes in anything. Um, Lance's blue lion has probably predictably has got some ice powers. Yeah, so the red lion has fire. Right. The blue lion has ice, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> right. Um, Hunk, his lion may be the strongest one, it's, certainly the brute force approach. Yeah, it basically like chomps on things and smashes them. Yeah. Shiro's black lion has got the really cool kind of jaw blade mm-hmm. um, that he can use to, as it, you know, it seems, kind of slice through anything, yeah. which is nice. And then uh, Pidge's green lion has got some kind of miscellaneous kind of sneaky sorts of abilities. So he, he's got a shield. Which he created. It's kind of a, a, well, he's got the shield, but then he also has installed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> because that's what. What Pidge does, right. um, a a cloaking device. Yes, so I thought that those were all some nice develop. I mean, part of it is kind of characterization, mm-hmm. but but we do see a progression here where they are learning um, about the individual capabilities of of their lions, um, and the lions are communicating with them and yeah. letting them know, like, hey, this is how you should be 
defeating these um, yeah. creatures, these weapon systems, whatever. Right. Yeah, because we were kind of told by Princess Allura at the at the you know first episode or two that the lions did this, um, and so it, it's I, I thought it was good to see them kind of following through on that because uh, as I recall from the original Voltron series, there wasn't necessarily the same level of differentiation between okay. the the lions. I mean, the, there was some, um, but it was more kind of implicit. So uh, I, I like that it's that it's a little bit deeper um, view yeah. of, of the lions. I absolutely yeah. agree. I thought that was really interesting. I do really enjoy that, like the connections that they have with their yeah. lions. So one thing that we haven't talked about is the, the Druids plot yeah. that runs kind of throughout both of these sure. episodes. Yeah, so we, we've got we've got a couple of things going on. We've got this kind of Komar um, experiment to extract what I think for the first time this season we're learning is called mm -hmm. quintessence, mm -hmm. which is this kind of vital life force mm -hmm. um, that uh, the Galra are harvesting, and the Druids um, Hagar um, she offers Zarkon this kind of new technique for instead of kind of you know, stripping the life force out of an entire planet's biosphere over a period of years, she can do it, you know, in a day or an hour or something. Yeah. Um, and so that's a new capability for them. And we're also learning that basically they strip mine the life force out of a, you know, a, a happy little, you know, planet with like antelope space antelope on it it's very strange. and then um and then they use that they embody that in a kind of crystal and then they use that to infuse some poor um unsuspecting animal with you know that was kind of cute with, it was like, cute it, eyes. yeah i mean it was basically totally unaware that it was going to be turned into yes. like a monster villainous uh, creature right right and so we see that thing kind of you know crash <laughs> Onto the Balmera at the at the end of um, uh, episode yeah. seven, and obviously this is the the second row beast that dun, dun, dun. That, that, that we're gonna see. Yeah. Um, and I assume that's where episode eight is gonna kind of pick up from there. Which I think I mean I think that's part of why we both would give it an A. Yeah. Like this episode's an A because um you know if the the I think this season is meant you could you could binge watch it and sit watch Absolutely. it as an entire season, but I think the way that we've broken it up to see two at a time. It, you know, everything kind of leads into the next thing. Sure. Um, and it's a really nice progression. Definitely. Great. All right. Thanks. thanks.